Hello and good day to you. Today's video on series 1, episode 13 of 12 Crafts of Card Making, the technique of digital craft, a focus on photographic image. We are combining background, topper, frame, typography and embellishment uses to make a greeting card design. For this project, we will need a photographic image, digital, Graphics software. I'm using Corel Paint Shop Pro X9. Printer to print the card if you desire. We'll tell you what you need when we're making the handmade greeting card. Click on File, Open to locate the image folder. And Click on, your, on the image when you see it and then open. Because we'll be doing some changes on the image to, so that we can derive the effect we want, we're going to press shift. I'm using Windows, so I, um, you, press, um, you press shift on your keyboard and D. Press it together and it duplicates the image. Close the original. We don't want to save over it. We don't want to alter it. Even if it's a mistake, if we make a mistake in altering it, we don't want that. That's why we are doing this. So here is a duplicated image. If you notice the first one I opened, there was... um the camera name on it sorry the so here's the image you can see that it's duplicated we have image two and i've closed the original just now I'm going to do a lot of changes to it and uh, so the first one i'm going to do is go to effects on the menu tab go to effect artistic effect and scroll down to posterize click on it this is optional i just want the colors to feel painterly like a painted image so i'll use level eight i like it you can go down or you can and you can Go up, let's see. I think I'll go down. I like I'll use eight. Level eight is all right, and I'll click OK. Then I'll change. This is also optional. I just want a kind of effect on the, on the image. Click on image. Menu tab, click on image. Decrease color depth. And scroll to 12, sorry, 16 color palettes. Click on it. Check optimize median cut for the palette. Then reduction method, nearest color. Then you click OK. You can see how it's going to be. You see the before and after. If you, and if you click on preview image, you will see it on it. Alternatively, you can omit the effects and just do the posterized effect and just do only this image reduction, color reduction. So now I'll duplicate on the layer palette. I'm just going to bring my layer out, layer palette out. I'll right click on it and duplicate the image. Then just make the original, the background, which is the original, invisible. Then just close the eye on it to get invisible. Go back to.
effect click on effect on the menu tab image effect and we'll go for seamless styling because we want to create a background and if you preview it on the image this is how it's going to be if you don't like it you can play with the setting but i do love the setting tiling method is corner setting horizontal offset in percentage is two vertical offset in percentage is minus two transition in percentage is 50. let me see if it's going to i'm just playing around to see Okay, I'm playing around with the transition now to just see how Okay We'll use this setting instead Tiling method corner On the setting section On the setting section, horizontal offset in percentage is 2, vertical offset in percentage is minus 2, transition is 8, direction, bidirectional, corner, style, linear, and then we'll click OK. The material palette, we can go to the material palette and we'll see the image there. But before we do that, okay we, before we do that we'll go to you go to file new want to make an a5 page that we're going to work on that's going to be the front of our card so go to paper click on a5 and now the setting is on um it's a portrait i want my a5 card to be landscape so i'm going to use an a4 card for the base but i want the front of it is going to be if uh, the card will be folded to make an a5 card click in the image dimension switch these arrows and if you put your cursor over it, it tells you to switch height it switches the height and width so you can switch it so click on it to switch it and in the preview you see that you have a landscape image resolution is 300 and we're creating it on a raster background then you click ok so this is the image we're going to we've already tied the image and remember we still have our original here Wait, this is the original we're going to use it later on so i'll close this one we need the tie image tied image in um we need it activated because that's what we want is to flood fill so click on this new page the a5 page that a5 image that you've created on the material palette just click into the color a window appears you see color gradient pattern click on pattern and if you notice our image is an image too with a pattern so you click on it if you want to increase the scale you can increase the scale if you want to rotate the angle you can i'm going to put the angle at zero and leave the scale 10. i think 10 is even the lowest okay 10. all right then you click ok and you see it appear in your material palette if it's not there in your material palette just click on this icon here and you'll be able to switch between color gradient and pattern
Take your flood fill tool in the tool palette, click on the flood fill tool and flood fill your image with the pattern. And here we have it. I still want to create some effect over it. This is also optional. I just want to do something more. Since we are combining photographic designs, it's lines playing around. So it gives unique work of art. So click on effect, texture effect, and we'll go to Okay, before then, sorry, let's just duplicate in case we don't like it. So on your layer palette, right click and duplicate close the original work with the copy in case we don't like the image of uh, the design we're going to the effect you're going to put on it we can delete it and just go back to the original so activate the copy click on effect texture menu palette effect texture and we'll go to weave i want a basket weave effect i played around with this setting yesterday and i have i played around with this setting And I have um, test nines. So here is the setting gap size 16, width is 81, opacity 100. And if you click on preview on image, you can see how it is. You can decide if you want it or not. Then weave color is optional. You can click on it and play around with the weave color. If you go to light, you see the effect. So you can decide to go on a dark one. And with your eyedrop and with the eyedropper tool, you can pick any color from inside the image for the weave color, also with the gap color. You can also decide to uncheck the fill gap and it will be and there will be no gap in your in the woven image. But I like the effect of the white, so I'm going to leave that. And then if you're happy with it, you click OK. We have a nice background now. So I want to add this nice background. We've done the background now. We need to add uh, the frame. Also, sorry, I forgot to. OK, no, we, we don't need We may need it. We may not need it. So when I come, when we I get to that, let me not. Uh, rush so i want to add a frame around because if you remember i said we're going to make a background topper frame typography and embellishment on this card on this so we'll go to image add borders i'm going to take okay i'll take with my eyedropper too, I'm going to pick a color of choice. I think I'll go for the yellow first and see if I like it. Okay, add border. Size is in centimeters. Sorry, I didn't state that. Size is in centimeters. Original dimension. This is the original dimension. And you can resize it the way you want to. So I made sure the size is going to be 0 0.25 centimeters. You can go lower, you can go higher. So I just want tiny borders first before I put the main border around it. That's a frame. To, so that it acts as a frame. So I'm going to pick another color. My dropper two, I'm going to pick Okay. Then I'll image and I'll add another border. This time I'm going to make this border white. Or oh, let me take a yellow first, then take a white in between. Okay. Then I'll image, add border. I'm going to make this one white and I'm reduce the size. Let me make sure it's white, pure white. Okay. And then I'll reduce the size to like one, 
0 0.150 for the white. I just wanted it to make it something. The white is just a thin border. I just want a kind of reflection there. Okay. Then after that, I'm going to... This means that our A5 page is getting bigger. We'll resize. So go to image. Go to add border again. This time I'm going to make it black. Then I'm going to resize it to... Let me see five, how it's going to be. Okay. So I've made a 0 0.5 border around on, in black. Then I need my magic wand too, because I want to float fill. If you take the float fill and just place it on the black, it will appear on it. But to be safe, so that you don't float fill the white hand, it's nice to click on your magic wand too. Go to the toolbox, take on selection, click on the magic wand too. I'll just undo the, the fill first. Then you allow the, you click on the color you want to flood fill or to alter. Then take your flood fill too and flood fill with the pattern. And now we have a nice frame around it. You can also go to effects, 3D effects, in a bevel. That's if you want to add a bevel, a kind of embossed touch, erase the effect to it, you can add that. And you can see that it's a bit darkened. This is setting I use for the bevel. The depth, image, smoothness 44 light color but i think we need to it's too dark i think i need to let's go down on the shininess and see what we can come up with before i read So you can play around with your setting and see what you want. If you don't want it to be too dark. Okay, this is the setting we'll use. It's a bit bright and I think I like it. <laughs> I don't think I like it. <laughs> okay. Bevel. We we'll use the, the we we'll use the second one. If you click on it, you can choose any one you want. If you want the triangle one you want the sector and so on you want them you will click on any one you want the width is 31 the image smoothness is 44 light color white depth to angle 315 ambience zero intensity 73 shininess 33 elevation 21 and if you're happy with it you click on preview on image so that you see how it is on your image if you like it or if you don't like it and you click on ok selection menu tab you click on selection and selection none so here you have a nice image now that's a very fine it can make it as a topper for a card it can make for a but we've, we've done the frame and we've done the background so now we need to do the topper and that's how when we we'll need this we we'll need the original of this image we can use this or we can use the original it all depends on us and remember you are the designer so you go with what you want you make your unique work of art play around so it's a bit different from others And I forgot to state, these pictures, um, I took them with my camera. That's why you saw the DC in the beginning before I closed that original image. And I'll just go here and say, 
open recent file and now we have um, I can see it here there's a memory card storage stated its name so they are written my pictures so you can use yours or you can ask for permission to use it any other person's own so i'll go to we need to create sorry let's go back <laughs> okay we need to create the topper so for the topper on the two palettes click on the rectangle tool or the preset preset shape click on rectangle you can use any shape you want to or and you can also alter that shape okay i've just um, sorry i'll just wait and go back again <laughs> so that I, so click on the rectangle tool and here you have the actions that you can decide which one you want so in the mode i said i checked um draw rectangle show nodes tick show nodes and create on vector the height and the width when you drag it when you draw the rectangle to show the height and the width and they are in pixels so i can't remember how to convert to <laughs> i don't i don't know if we can convert to um to centimeters in here but i know i have to go into image it's, i've used so much of it sometimes they just confuse me because so the line with an anti or anti alias on check i don't want um although we can want we want anti okay so let's i'll just drag across oh, oh oh sorry made a mistake sorry 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 so on the material palette i don't want it to ha um have a stroke i just want a border uh, a rectangle so on the material palette i'm going to close click on the transparency and make it then the background it's not going to be pattern it's going to be color and i want the color to be white i'm starting with white so i want the color to be white i'll leave this green then we can switch it on later so drag the rectangle across how you want it to be we, re we can resize it later Oh, still, still, let the rectangle still be active. You can resize it the way you want to. So, I'm if you want to decide on this, I'll uh, just duplicate and move and see if it can fit. If you have an actual size, that's fine. So, I think I like this, it can go three times. But I'm just going to delete them. Okay, so I'm going to use my pick tool to activate it and click on the rectangle so that so for this rectangle the size The size is um, 697 pixels in width and 1613 in height. It's in vector. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to convert it to raster. So to convert it to raster, oh, I didn't show you. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm rushing. Convert it to raster on the layer palette, activate the 
rectangle layer and click on convert to raster so in the layer palette we are going to right click on it and click on duplicate to duplicate the rectangle and in the material palette I'll select my flood fill tool first then on the material palette I'm going to right click to fill it with the green color you can also let me instead of the green color let me use this gray okay. oh I'll fill it with this Greenish gray. You can resize it manually or you can go to image, resize, and resize by percentage. Make sure you don't resize all layers. So I'm just going to resize it manually using the pick tool. The pick tool is with the move tool. You just click on it. So I'm just going to resize it manually. Then duplicate again this um, steel green or grayish green. Duplicate it and we're going to fill it with uh, yellow. So bring the material palette. I'm going to take the color yellow. I will fill it with a pattern. Okay, no, we'll fill it with yellow first. Okay, we'll fill it with yellow. Right, take your flood fill tool and right click on the image to flood fill. I'll just use the pick tool to resize it. And remember, you can go to image resize because I don't have um, a natural size. It will take time because I have to play around to get to. But you can resize in percentage. You can make in ninety five percentage. Or so. so I'm the third. This next one I'm going to resize it like that for those that um, need it. So layer palette. Right click to duplicate. I've duplicated it. The rectangle. So I'm going to flood fill with a different color this time. Take the flood fill tool and flood fill with a different color. Go to image. I'm going to resize this time. And okay, I'll use 95 percent to resize. You can resize by pixel percent by print size. You can resize. I'm going to play around and resize by 95. Should I say 98? Let me use 98. Because I just need a thin border. Resampling using by cubic. I locked the aspect ratio and uncheck resize all layers because we just want only that layer. So we're just going to see. I think 98 is too small. Okay, I'll go back and resize again. I'm going to make the height 98 and the width, let me say 95. Uncheck lock aspect ratio and I'm going to make it like that. So that you know you can resize one side from the other. Okay. 
Okay, I think this is better. That's fine. So this was, um, sorry, <laughs> this is the setting. I was just trying to see if it would be nice before coming back. So we resize by percentage. The weight, we use 95, the height, 98. Advanced setting and um, resample using by cubic. We didn't check the lock aspect ratio. That's why we made different changes to it. And you have to uncheck resize all layers because we want just one layer. So we have it. We now know how to resize with a pick two and with um, and with image resize in pixel. So we have this. I'm going to do something else. I'll bring the layer palette here and I'm going to duplicate this green one. Sorry, this brown one. I'll need to duplicate it three times more. And then I'll cl just close the visibility of the original and close this other visibility. I don't want them to interfere in what we are, we are going to do. We need it to be straight. We're going to move it across the page and we need it to be straight. So you can use your arrow key. Let me try the shift key. It's going to no, the shift key is bending. This is where the X and Y as is coming. Please. Let me see the Y X as is. Okay. I'll copy the X as is. Position on the X as is. And take note of position on the Y as is. So we can use that to line it up. We already have one. So we're just going to line. Just move it across. We, we need it close to each other. Sorry. Then we need this one to move. Sometimes if you press your shift key, if it's something like affinity, if you press your shift key, it gives it straight, it moves it straight. So maybe I'm using the wrong tool. Okay, so I'm going to make sure. Okay, straight. So what I'm going to do now for this stream, I'm going to bring this image back. You know, we have three um, rectangles here. One, two, and three. I want to put an image and use it to tube it. I know I've done another process before. I'm just going through another pattern. So I'll open the original. Not the one we tied. I've closed the one we tied. This is the one we tied. And I'm just going to close the visibility and open the original. Then I'll make sure I activate it on the layer palette. And then click on edit copy. Then come back to this our A4 image and I'll click on edit paste as new layer. It's a very large file. So we need to, that's why I have to minimize the page. It's a very large file. So you need to zoom out to see. Just drag the handles. Be careful not to skew it. We just want it to fit the page. Okay. We're going to move this image up once. I don't think I did that a little. Just drag on the diagonal and it's going to be perfect. 
don't drag on the sides because it's going to skew your image so i'll bring it up to see to make sure that i didn't alter the image wrongly all right so we have this image here if you want if a lot of your image if the image is not entering the design properly let me take it down a bit and you see if it's not entering the design properly you know that a lot's been cut out you can rotate the image there's no law there that it must be horizontal you can rotate it to make sure you can even make it on a diagonal so that the image you're trying to create a topper and you are creating a unique work of art so i'll take lift out this image this is the original that we've resized so i'm going to duplicate it about three times more and then close the origin close the visibility of the original with our magic wand tool we'll select we'll select one of this image the rectangle sorry the brown rectangle we'll click on it then it depend on how it's selected if you click on the background it's going to select the background and around the rectangle and you can see it on the image then click on select okay that's how you want it okay that's how it's supposed to be then click on delete press delete on your keyboard That's how I want it. So we'll come back to one of the images. The one we duplicated. The original image that we duplicated. Come back to one of those copies and you click on delete. Here you see it. I'm going to bring it on top so that you... But I don't want it to affect the design. That's why I'm leaving it behind. So you click on selection, none. Then we take the second one, I'm going to click on the background and find another of that image which you have here. I'm coming, let me just see if I can make this. Um, okay. Activate that image. Click on the rectangle. Sorry, click on the rectangle to select it with the magic wand tool. Then locate the image that we are going to we want to crop the image into the rectangle. Then you can click on delete. Here you have it here. Then you click on selection on. So now we, we need for the third rectangle. So this third rectangle, we activate it. Click on the background and let it select the rectangle. Then you come back to the image we want to use for it. Activate that image layer and then click on delete. And we have it. Then click on selection none. So now we have three images. I'm just going to close and we'll see our image here. I'm going to use a pick tool for this. But I'm not going to resize anything or skew anything. I'm going to then close the visibility of those images, the three tabs we've created, because that's for our topper. Sorry, I didn't state that we are creating a topper. I make the visibility of these orders. This that cut up uh, rectangles i made the visibility of these slim rectangles open
these three rectangles that we have here. If you want to, you can right click on it and then click on merge visible that you have to that means you have to close all the others and allow this one or you can click on merge down to merge it with the other one down so i'm going to use merge down to merge it with the other rectangles down and i'll click on again merge down so we've merged all the rectangles together and then we'll click on right click on it and click on duplicate going to move it across the page i will duplicate it a third time and move it across the page if you are not good with lining you can make one down and make one up let's make that let's put one a bit up and a bit down let's put this one to the middle a bit And you can use grid to line your work if you want to. So now it's time to fill this, fill this rectangle with our image. Sometimes some people don't have to go through this um, pattern. They just get the magic wand to click into the set, into the image they want. I think it's for the middle. They just click into the section and then they float fill with a pattern. But I don't we can do that in another in the second in another demonstration. So I'm going to make all the ones with tubes visible and I'll move them. This will be moved into this. Trying to make a screen light topper. So here we have it. An image. Why we went through this, this through that um process is because if I had just placed the this slim rectangle tabs or toppers separately and I just put the image over it. Some part of the image would have been lost in the space and I didn't want that. I want the image together so that to be as you slip, snip three rectangles together and split it. Now when the images are joined together, they form one. That's what I was trying to get, that effect. So we've done a topper, we've done the frame, the background and topper. So now it's time for us to do the typography. Before then, let's save our work. It's not in saving your work because some of this file, some of this software do have bugs. And if you've not saved and you can auto recover, that's a problem because sometimes it auto saves for you. So means that if it crashes before the next auto save it's only the, the last auto save that you can revert to so i'll go to file savers and i'll call this 12 crafts of card making series one episode 13 
now click on save i'm saving in psd format so that i can open it in um, and it will be in layer format because we are still working we want to export we can export in psd or we can export in um, jpeg but we have we are still working we need it in a file format we we don't want it made that's why we have to save in psd format and in psd you can open it in adobe elements photoshop element you can open it in clip studio you can open it in um you can open it in clip studio you can open it in affinity um i think anyone that any file that can open psd you can open it next what i wanted to do was take this image and take it into affinity so that we can work there because it's easier for me sometimes making vector shapes in affinity because it's a vector program and you can also move between vector but i just i wanted this um pattern i wanted to play around with the effect here in corrupt paint shop pro so that's why i'm using this but next one i'll take i'll be moving from one software to another because that's how i really create designs i move from one software to another can start in corrupt paint shop pro and end in affinity i can start from affinity and end in corrupt paint shop pro or sketchbook yeah you can open it in sketchbook psd yes you can open it in sketchbook So let's make an, another shape. Go into the ellipse tool. Take the ellipse shape tool and I'm just going to drag around. You need to come up. <laughs> Bring it to the top, sorry. <laughs> so I just um, place it. Trying to see. No, I don't want that. Get the ellipse. The two palette. Click on. Click on your preset shape and take the ellipse. drag it across and you can resize it the way you want to i'm going to make it small i just want to say the word thanks and that's So I'm going to convert it to raster. I like the size, and so I'm going to convert it to raster. Right click and then convert to raster. And I'll duplicate it and fill it with um, I'll fill it with the gray. The greenish gray. So and flood fill with the greenish gray you can resize the way you want you can go to image resize let's go to image resize for this and let me just say resize and let's use um, the same setting that we used previously by percentage width 95 height 98 now let's switch which should be let's leave it like that okay if we don't like it, we'll come back. Remember to uncheck resize all layers and lock aspect ratio. Then you click on it. Okay, I think we should use both. <laughs> so we'll go back again and go to image resize. Let me put both of them. I'm using 95 in percentage for both of them now to see if I'll like it. Okay, that's fine. 
and then we'll duplicate again and this time I'm going to fill it with white then I'll resize image resize and use the same setting remember to uncheck all layers so here we have it take your text tool and if you want to you can click on the material palette go to pattern no I don't think let me see if this is the one we have been using okay this is the current pattern is still in there we can still use it but if you don't have it there you can go back to your image the image tool close the original open the tiling and then we'll have you have the pattern and then you can allow it then it will appear here okay so this time we are going to you do the text tool and in the material palette we've already gone back to get the pattern I'm, go I'm going to switch it because I want the filling, the text to have the pattern. So I'm going to switch. I did it wrong. I did it in for the stroke. I want the stroke to be gray, grayish green. So I'm going to put that for the stroke. And then the background is that's going to be filled the text is going to be filled with a pattern alternatively you can click into each text and fill it with pattern but i'm just going to create it up. cap lock on choose a font of your choice i want a big and bold font i'm saying thank you okay so i'm just going to type thanks select all and resize it to about 30 and let me see if I like it now <laughs> let me resize it no 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 I'm just trying to resize the text so if I like it also let me increase the stroke width on the tab there the two bar the tab you can increase the stroke width I'm going to leave it at um let me leave it at five at and anti alias is on check is off font color speed with pattern and the size black oak is standard is the font and the size is 36 so i'll leave it like that i just want it to be big so i'm going to drag it up a bit I'm going to resize it manually So I think I like this font. It's fine. It's bold. I'm saying thank you. So here we have. We use this as a typography, and I'll just click on file and save <laughs> so that we save this. Okay, it's going to. It's asking me because we still have some files in vector format like the shape, the ellipse, and the text. It has to convert it to raster. That's why I'm saying because of the limitation of the specified file format and possibly the save option you have selected, any unsupported vector data will be lost. Would you like to continue? Yes. Beautiful. 
we are still saving in psd format so that we can open it next we need to do, make the embellishment so go back to our original image and i have to save this let me let's save this one first i'll save it five savers i'm going to save it as um episode oh okay i'll use the same file name but i'll add something to the end i'll say tiling image i'm saying capital okay that's fine then click on save i'm leaving it in p i'm saving it in psd so that it will be in layer format and i can open it in photo element photoshop element is it photo element or photoshop element photoshop element i can open it in affinity and other software that can open psd files so i'm going to close the tied image i'll just close the visibility of the tile image and open the original i'll duplicate the original because there's some alteration i want to do on it so i'll close the visibility of the original and work on the copy of this original in two palettes click on your magic wand and click on smart selection brush we just want to select the section of the flower make sure the copy is activated and the mode is add shift no feather tolerance nine you can play around no anti-alias smart edge if you've been following this um, series you will note that we did this in affinity to select the image we went into pixel personnel and we are doing it now in um, coral paint shop pro so i select i want these two flowers i still need the leaves i'll come back for one of the leaves later it all depends if I want it. I think I like this leaf here. But I want it separately so that I can move the leaf around without the picture coming in. And if you don't want any of this, you can click on remove to remove the part you don't want. Like if there's a section here I don't like, I can just go, I'll click on remove. Let me do that and I'll just click on it and it will remove that part that I don't want. You see it? Oh, let me come in. Okay, let me go back, edit on the smart selection. I don't, if I want some section here, let me say, okay, I want this leaf here and uh, I didn't select it. Oh, I, there's a part I want to remove from this selection. The mode you from instead of add shift which we are using you just click on remove and then you go in and click on that part and say remove you can also reduce the size of your brush to do to go in to you can reduce the size of your brush to work so that you can select whatever you desire to select so i'll go back to add because we need this flower and i'll go into remove i need this section of this flower so i'll go back to remove and i'm turning to remove this flower i need to reduce my size my brush size now and go to add and go closer So because we've selected the background now, the background, we can now click on delete and we'll have just the flowers. So click on select and selection now. Alternatively, instead of selecting none, you can say select invert selection. 
oh, we have some we have some parts selected here. We have to remove those parts. So I'll go back and say, in, okay, no, remove. And I'm going to select this edge to remove it because I found that that's some. Edge. Okay, so we have the we have our image now. So if you go to selection, because the background is selected now, so it's going to be expand, and you see it's cutting into the image. Yeah, you can reduce it to whatever the pixel you want it to be, and then you click OK. And when you click delete, you notice that those, let me click selection on, you find out that those edges is, they are all gone. You can do that. It's optional. There's no problem in leaving a little of your background around it. So now we need to take our tubed image to our design to create the embellishment. So I'll take um the two pa the two palettes. Click on the selection brush. Sorry, not the selection brush. Selection two, just selection. It's among the magic one, the freehand selection smart brush. Just click on it, and in the precepts, though it's it shows the selection precept here. The selection type you're going to choose, you choose, is an ellipse. Feather is zero. Anti alias not checked. And selection type is normal. Mode is hard. For your first image, go just take some place as if it's the middle of the image, and then drag out so that it selects only that image. Now we have selection. Then we'll go to edit and copy. Tell it to copy it. Come back to our design. I'll come here and say edit. Paste as new layer. Remember to always paste as new layer. Then with our pick tool, we're just going to resize it to one side. Just going to arrange it first before I bring the second one. Just trying to make sure I don't really cover the font so much. Right, so we have it here. We still need to we'll add some dimensions to it. We're coming to that. So come back and come back here and say selection none. The same setting for the selection. Take the selection two. Ellipse shape. Add. I will come to the smaller image and we drag from the middle out. Now we have a nice selection. Go to edit and then copy. Come back to our working image and we we'll say edit. We say edit and we we'll say paste as new layer. You paste it in the middle and we'll arrange it the way we want. You can leave it as large as this. To print this, everything is going to be, we have to print everything separately so that we can build the handmade card. So I'm going to resize this a little so I don't cover the letter S. So now we have this. 
we're not really finished but we're almost through with this section before we progress into the handmade section you can stop here but if you want to add a drop shadow which i want for this project then let's go first of all let me see if i i'll say save and i like to save Make sure you are not saving in a um, JPEG format when you are saving because even some prompts do come like this when you are saving in JPEG format. So make sure you are not saving in JPEG format. Okay, so here we have in. Let's add drop shadow. For the first, um, this upper, we've created our embellishment but we just want to add drop shadow to the flower we want a little bit of lifting so we'll go to effects activate the flower you want to add the drop shadow to or the image go to effect 3d effect and we'll go to drop shadow you can decide any color yes when i was playing around i used the gold um if you don't want let me use this um gray okay let me use the gray this time and i want you to create it on a new layer shadow should be sorry shadow should be on a new layer in case you don't like it <laughs> you can delete it and you don't have to go around undo 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 until you run out of all the undos okay so you the offset here sorry the offset is going to be the vertical offset and the horizontal offset if you activate it instead of playing around with the figures you can just click on this you see this this um cross this plus sign and this area you can move it and you'll find out that the figures are changing and if you take a look, because you click preview on image, you can see the image. So let's, um, the blur, you can make the blur pronounce. So we're just going to play around with that. Let's say the vertical, depend on how you okay, want it on the vertical. Now. okay let's leave it at that then i'll go back to the horizontal and with the horizontal you can play around so let's see And the opacity you can reduce it the way you want to because this is um a digital image you can reduce the opacity and if you're using a cardstock you can just trim around the cardstock and make it what you want and this technique you can also use this with this drop shadow to create a border around and if you want to cut you can i don't want to ask for go out i'll give the tip so we can use this technique to create is creating a nice border around so this um let's make the opacity a bit faint and uh, let's play with the horizontal i think i want it a bit oh, let me see okay it's a nice drop shadow Let's see. and if you want to change the color you can change the color you can make any you can use it to be any color you want if we decide on gold let's see it's reflecting but i think i want that color back so we've added it and you can see it here it's on the new layer I'll just close this eye just to give a tip before I go. Before before I go, before we finish. Before I did it, before we do the next one. If you see this image, let me duplicate and 
duplicate and in case I move it. <laughs> okay, you can see the image here. You can, if you want to, you can cut out this shape, this drop shadow shape. That's why I did it on the new layer. So that you can take, you can cut it out. And then when you cut this flower, just layer it on top. That's it's very easy for you to do. Or you can take this shape into your digital cutter and you can cut around it and then cut around the flower and you have um, like an offset on it. So... Let me let's do a drop shadow for this other embellishment here. So we'll go to effect 3D effect and drop shadow. If we use the same setting, it's going to the drop shadow is going to go off the it's going to go off the card. It's going towards it. We want it to the drop shadow to be on the text. So so that it gives a lifting for us in our text so i'm going to put that okay depending on how you want your drop shadow to be you just play around you remember you are the designer to what you like just give us a great design <laughs> So this time I'm going to change this one. Let me use gold and see how it's going to be if I play around with two different colors. Yes. Okay, I'm going to leave it differently. Let's do something different. So here we have our card. And if we are going to print, this is how the card this is the card we are going to build. So we just build them first on the design them and build them on the computer and then we print and then if you are going to make a handmade card if you're going to sorry if you're going to print then here's your card if you're going to print just print it and um like production card here it is but if you're going to make a handmade card that's another tax but we are going to make a handmade we are going to make a handmade card after this um it's, it's the part of the continuation of the video so we'll move to this work surface where we'll make the handmade card so to make the handmade card we will need to separate copy each and every one place it on a new page so that's the next step for us but this is a card that we'll, we'll be creating we've done it digitally so let's go let's prepare to make handmade so i'm going to justify and save here and I'm still saving in PSD format because I want my files to be in layer. So now I to I think I have to save this one first. Let me go to selection on. I can still leave the selection on, and it will be like that when I open it in PSD. Um, sorry, when I save it in PST, <laughs> so I say file and I'll just say save. Remember, I'm not saving over the original. We made a different a copy from in the beginning. We made a copy, so I'm just I'll still leave it, leave this intact like so. So now I'm going to go to file new. Let's make pages for our. Uh, handmade greeting card so I'll go to find new paper and i'm using a4 so i'll click on ok this first one i'm just going to switch in the material palette since we still have this setting on it i'm just going to switch it and we'll have it's not necessary you can right click to use it with my float field two, I'm just going to. Oh, <laughs> with my float field two, I'm just going to fill this A4 page with the pattern paper. If you want to, you can just place your dies on it or cut the let letters. So we use that for the letters and for the frame. 
So we use this for the letters and for the frame. After cutting out the frame, we use the remaining part for the letters. So I'll save this. I'll save it as we'll save it in JPEG format. So I'll go to I'll save it as JPEG. I'll say I'll use the same title so that I don't misplace them. Episode 13 A4 print one. Okay. And I'm saving in best quality. And I'll click on OK. You see the same prompt comes up, but this time it's saying it will be limited to a merge image. And do I like to continue? I say yes. Because I'm saving in JPEG now and um, it's a merge file. So I've saved that one. I'm not going to confuse myself and <laughs> save over it. So I'm going to make a new, a new one again. Say file, new. Paper is A4. We are trying to build, we're trying to make printables for our greeting card, handmade greeting card. So come the next one, all these plain let me use before I flood fill. Let me use in um the pick tool. Yeah, that's what I want to say. I want to use the pick tool before I mistakenly flood fill because the flood fill tool is still active. These solid colors we can use card for it, so I don't need to make page it. So I just get color code card for them. Then we'll come in. This why it's good to be to have them in five format. Then this um we are going to the next one we're going to do now is to flood we need this background so i'm going to flood fill again select my flood fill tool and flood fill with the same background we used for the first print table now but this time we are going to put that effect we'll go to effect texture effect and we're going to use wave the same setting you don't need to change them and you have when you put your a5 it's going to be when you cut out for the A5, you're going to have the same nice design. That's all. With the same setting. And you're going to click OK. So we're going to save this file save us in JPEG. And we'll call it um A4 print 2 because we are running out of um, names <laughs> so i'll just call it a4 print to i can pull with if it can take it so that i know this is the woven one so as soon as i finish saving one i'll close it i don't want to open too much if not we'll have too much files on the work surface and um, I don't want to give the software too much work to do not to ignite a bug so the um the third one we are going to save is this topper we need a topper so I'm going to go to find new a4 page again make sure, I just want to check and make sure it's a4 three please your print should be on 300 dpi the resolution so we need this topper and if you remember we duplicated one here so i'm just going to click on make it visible click on it then i'll go to edit and i'll say copy come back to this image and say edit and i'll say paste as new layer why i'm pasting as new name because alternatively you can just print you can just go, come here, print this original one we have here. You can print this one that we have here. But if you don't want to print it because you've already resized, you decided the size of the rectangles you're going to use, or the, then you can now select this one and print it. So I'm going to uncheck it. Sorry, I'm going to make it, I'm going to close the visibility 
so that we know the next one we need to do. So next one we are going to select. We've already taken the rectangle, so for the rectangle, so three rectangles will be cut out of this for our topper. Why the color code will be cut out of plain or solid color card. This text will be cut out when we are cutting out the frame and we've done for the background. So we need the embellishment. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to take the embellishment and we'll say edit, activate the layer and say edit, copy. We'll copy each one special differently or singly. Then we'll come back and come for the small embellishment and say edit, we say copy. I will say paste as new layer. Remember to always paste as new layer. If you want to, you can copy. Let's do that. Oh, sorry. This why <laughs> I like closing lots of um, files. Okay, we'll come. You say edit. We'll say copy. And we'll come in here and we'll say edit. We'll say paste as new layer. We are copying the drop shadow. I think this page is too small to put the drop shadow. So um, I'm going to I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove. Okay, the page is too small to put the drop shadow. So what I'll do is to delete all these ones. I'm just delete them. I'll delete the embellishment. I will make a new page for that. Then this topper that we did, I'm going to duplicate it and we can have to just drag it and we'll have to. Then you have to top us. So I'm going to we'll go to files, save. I'm saving in JPEG. And I'm going to say, okay, we have the names here. I'm going to just make sure I don't save over it. Be very careful. This is print three and I'll say topper. Best quality, saving, save as JPEG and then I'll click save. So we have to put this on a new page. I'll go to File New, the same A4. Click on OK. Then you come to the. We'll come to. We'll come back to the embellishment to we'll click on activate it and say Edit Copy. To the new page, we say Edit Paste as new layer. We'll come back again. So the second one we say edit copy we activate it and then we say edit paste as new layer on the new page we we need to add a drop shadow so i'll just add one more one drop shadow for each then we can duplicate to fill the image with in case you you decide that you want to cut in and layer more of these flowers to make a kind of dimension like decoupage that's up to you then you have images to play with so you activate the drop shadow layer you click on edit copy and you come and say edit on this new page you say edit paste as new layer and we'll drop it close once we're dropping it close so that we know this is for this. And uh, where's the other one? Okay. So we have, we've taken the second one. So it's edit copy. Come to it and we come edit. Paste as new layer.
so now we have a shape if you want to cut you can now take this one this page this one using you can take it into your digital cutter and let it cut around perhaps i'll use the digital cutter to cut this i really don't know for now but um, i will see my mood <laughs> I'm just duplicating it. I like, I want to have, um, I want to fill the page. Let me see if I can. I like filling pages with images. Let me see if I can have a third one. <laughs> Make maximum use of my page, of my paper. No, it's too small. Okay, I don't mind if it gets cut. I'll just use some one on top as there. Just trying to feel the page. <laughs> Don't want to waste my good quality paper. Okay, I'm gonna rotate to see if we can fit. Anyhow, it fits. Going to rotate to make sure it fits, but make sure I don't overlap. Uh huh. Okay, I'm going to duplicate one again and make this one smaller. The pages need to be fit. <laughs> Maybe I can make a kitchen out of that. Let's see. And let's move this one out so that we can. All right, I'll save this. We'll save this as the embellishment. Five savers. And um, if you don't want this on it, you can still put these images here. Then print this other or make this on another paper and print it on copy paper. You know, you just want to cut around it. Mm. Now, when you you can just leave this on copy paper, you can so that when you print on it on copy paper or print directly on your card. Don't need to print on your card. Print on copier paper. You just trim around it. Or you take it into your digital cutter and let your digital cutter select around it and cut around it. Then you don't need to feel. You will need to feel. This is just for people that want to cut manually so that they have um, the drop shadow to film. So I'll just go to file, save us, and we'll save this JPEG and um, I'll call this print for embellishment. So I'll close this. So here we here's the main one and if you want to just print like that you want to print it on a card maybe you want to make like a gift tag or gift card we'll go to find new this for the you can let's take a4 the same a4 page and you can resize it to whatever size you want it to be 
I'm going to first of all save this because I'm going to make an alteration. I remember I'm saving this particular one in. Uh, hope I didn't make a mistake saving just now. I have to check. <laughs> I just click file save. No, I have to check. I have to check. Let me see file save us. Let me see. Oh, you see, I was saving it as a JPEG. You see, I just made a mistake. Oh, because I forgot I was I've been saving on as JPEG since. So please, it's nice to check. If not, you you'll be saving as a JPEG instead of um because we've been saving as a JPEG since for the printable. Now, when I saved this uh, one, I just went to file save and I forgot that that same setting has been there. Right. So we'll go to. Okay. Here is it. I'm going to come to edit. We'll say copy. Make sure everything is in place intact or something. Then come to copy special and you say copy image. So the full file, visible file will be merged together and you come to file. Oh, sorry edit paste as new image then you have it as a new image and if you look you see a new image here this is the one we're going to print that if you want to make a gift tag if you want to make so come to image resize i'm going to tell it to resize by print size and we're going to come to standard and say we want it to be a5 If you notice the width is different from the height here we have to make sure that the width because the width is wider here it's giving us a5 for a portrait we want a5 for so we're going to make it 20.997 so that's what it says they're not 21.14.8 or so Let's see. So come edit copy. You're only copying the image. And then we'll come to this A4 page and say edit paste as new image. So we have it fitting now. You know when we added the border then we had adding borders increase the size of your image in digital so when you finish doing all those you have to resize so i'm just going to drag down ah <laughs> drag it down too much <laughs> Easy move to Okay, here we have it. If you're going to print it on A4 card, and that's why the drop shadow is good because it gives that effect of a 3D. But we need to add something at the back before you add your words. So we'll come in here and pick one of our flower. I think I'll I like the big one, so I'll come to edit, copy. If you want the leaves, remember you can come in here and select the leaves. I just don't want to go back to do that just didn't want to go back to do that so come to edit paste as new layer and you have if you want it big you can leave it. if you don't want it big you can resize it so i'm just going to resize it a little that's not too big 
just align this one at the back so that the back too is not that bare. but if you have your logo you can put your logo you can put your logo down there select the text to make sure the material palette decide how you want your stroke to be i don't want a stroke and um I want the text to be in black so i'm going to then the font I'm going to select a nice font i will be using we'll be using accord standard font and now you can make it large then you can reduce it to any size so i'll make it small you just make it there. and with cap lock on i'm using cap lock on because i'm going to type um if you want to type your website you know sometimes l and i do differs because of font different kind of font so it's nice using capital letter to type your website so that it's legible dot So here is it and I'm going to say if you want to, if I want to resize I can resize I can leave it large like that it's about 24 that's going to be too big so I'm going to make it about um, 14 oh let me let me make it 16 it's a website you need to see it <laughs> okay so um let's go to image mirror and mirror vertically oh it's gone down <laughs> it went down then we'll go to image again and we say flip flip horizontal so that when you bend the card it reads right if not uh if you noticed before it was upside down you know this side is the back and so when you bend it it's rich right so here we have i'm not putting close to too close so if you have your logo you can just put your logo by the side here so i have my logo if you want you can put your logo there so just leave the card like that and there's a nice card oh, i'll be printing this to say thank you for the christmas gifts the festive for the gifts during the festive holidays let's mm. thank all those who sent me enemies and friends <laughs> <laughs> i don't have any enemies <laughs> okay can just print this to thank people for all the festive gifts during the holiday season mm -hmm. And all the nine things they've done for me throughout the year. Good and bad. I appreciate them all. <laughs> Alright, so let me say five savers. So I'll make this as print five. And I'll see greeting card okay i'm saving it as a jpeg because i want to print if you want to you can also save it as um a P in psd format or in jpeg but i'll just save it as a jpeg so here we have we don't need to save this anymore we don't need this one but if you want to you can save that and use it as a topper again and just you can use that as a topper you know we already have yes yeah, so you can print this and use it as a topper it's going to make a nice topper because that will keep the stress of mounting and creating weight you can create this it's a very good topper and you can use it you can just punch hole to one side and put it in flowers if you want to write you can send it as postcard it can be a postcard 
maybe it's a picture of a flower from your garden that we, you used in creating this and so you have all right let's save five and i'll make sure it's, it's servers <laughs> mm -hmm. psd psd format and i'm saying yes to it let's progress to the work surface now we have made this design we made we as I said earlier we did it for we did a frame we did the background we did topper and we did um typography and we did embellishment so let's progress to the work surface where we'll make this as a handmade greeting card <laughs> 